joining me is Donald Trump's last chief of staff when he was president, Mick Mulvaney. Mick Mulvaney, it's great to see you again. The media coverage of Donald Trump, is the media itself on trial in this election? Oh, I think so. They've lost a lot of credibility, Andrew, over the course of the last six or seven years. They've never figured out a way to deal with Donald Trump, you know, going all the way back to the original Russia investigation in 2016, 2017. They've been wrong so many times about Donald Trump. The most recent, I guess, would be some of the comments he makes out on the road that get taken out of context. And even today, we had one of the left-leaning networks having to apologize for misrepresenting something that Trump said. So, yeah, I think there is a credibility issue. It's bad for the country. I happen to think that a, a healthy and credible press is good for uh, democracies. But right now, the, the press says a uh, lot of the press has a, has a credibility problem here. Well, I wonder whether uh, what's going to happen if the media dresses Trump up as the new Hitler, uh, what will happen on the street should he win? Because, of course, the new Hitler is serious, if it's true. But is he, in fact, uh, the new Hitler, uh, raging that uh, he'd like to see even his opponents being executed, as we're told? Yeah, I don't have too much concern about Donald Trump being the next um, Hitler. I worked with the man for four years. Listen, if I had seen anything like that, Andrew, I would have would have quit on the spot. Look, the Trump derangement syndrome is a real thing. There are people who just cannot deal with Donald Trump rationally, and they end up doing irrational things. This includes his former chief of staff, John Kelly, my predecessor, who came out over the course of the last several days and said that he, he, he heard Trump say nice things about Hitler. He considered Trump to be a fascist, a dictator in waiting, et cetera. You know, I worked with John. I worked in the same White House. I called dozens of my former workers and said, "Did did, did I just miss this? And did, did y'all hear this? And I and no one ever told me. And they hadn't they hadn't heard it either. Interestingly, there are a bunch of anti-Trump." former administration officials who came out in support of those comments by John Kelly. But what they didn't say was that they heard the same things. They said it sounded about right or they believed John. So look, it's a he said, she said at the very highest level. Um, but the bottom line is, no, um, I don't think he's going to, I'm not at all concerned about it being Hitler. I voted for him, by the way. If I, if I thought he'd Hitler, it was Hitler, that wouldn't happen. But I think your point is well made, which is somebody's going to believe it. Um, and if they really do believe it, what comes next? Will there be riots if he wins? Will be the additional assassination attempts if he wins? We can talk about the chances of violence if he loses, but there's also, a, you know, a non-zero chance of violence if he wins for some of the reasons you've just pointed out. Look, there are problem. I have some problems with uh, Donald Trump. I don't like uh, the the braggadocio. I don't like the uh, the exaggerations, even lies. I don't like his attitude to Ukraine. I don't like that. But I have to say, do you get... I get the sense that so many of America's institutions have been corrupted by the attempt... You know, the way they've been trying to get him out of the way. But in my view, in uh, underhand means, I feel that I can't allow them to win. I can't... It would be illegitimate for those tactics, the lawfare, etc., the media lying, to end up with the result that Trump is defeated. Do you sense that any of that feeling yourself... I'm feeling that with about 80 million people. What you've just described, Andrew, is the typical Trump voter. The typical Trump voter doesn't like the style. The people who go to the rallies might. Um, but the ordinary, you know, center-right Republican-leading voter doesn't like a lot of the, 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 the style, the things, the braggadocia, the things that you've just mentioned. But they also don't like the fact that he's been targeted. Keep in mind, his message has been extraordinarily precise and concise. I know that sounds somewhat oxymoronic from Donald Trump, but down below all of the, 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 uh, the miscalculations and misdirections and all the getting off of message, this has been his motto. Look at what they're doing to me. Um, I'm rich and I'm wealthy and I'm powerful. If they can do this to me, imagine what they can do to you. Vote for me and that won't happen. And there's that, that, that has been very, very compelling. So when you say that's how you feel, what I hear is the mainstream Republican voter. And if Donald Trump does win on Tuesday, it's going to be because tens of millions of people look at it the exact same way you just uh, articulated. There's been so much... Uh... Corruption of the, I don't want to sound like a tinfoil hat guy, but corruption of uh, of authority here, so, so to speak. There's even now claims by uh, respected poll analysts like Nate Silver, now he's certainly not a, a man of the right, that polling companies, for instance, 
cannot even be trusted now to be honest about what their own polls are showing. How are you calling this election? Um, very close. By the way, Nate, as is so often the case, and I, I have high regard for Nate, he's a professional, but it's so often the case in politics, it, things aren't a lie, they're sort of a half-truth. Polling that shows uh, sort of divergence from the mean late in a race is typical here because it's done to try and get out the vote. Um, I can listen, uh, Andrew, if you want to show a race that shows you beating Donald Trump by 12 points, I can give you that poll by virtue of the questions I ask and the people I ask. And all campaigns do this or many campaigns do this, which is they tailor a poll late in the day to make their person look either good for momentum purposes or bad for fundraising purposes. We do it all the time. I can't tell you the number of texts I've got from Ted Cruz saying, look, I've got polling data said that I'm losing my Senate race in Texas. He's trying to raise money. So when Nate comes out and says, look, there's this divergence, I'm a little concerned about it. Yes, but what he's not telling you is that this is not that far from the ordinary course of business. You ask me a straight question, I'll give you a straight answer. I think the race is very, very close. I think less than 100,000 votes in Pennsylvania, maybe less than 50,000 votes in Wisconsin, maybe less than 50,000 votes in the states of North Carolina and Georgia. You know, in a country of 250 million people, or I guess we're up bigger than that now, that's, a, that's just an extraordinarily tight race. Mick Mulvaney, thank you so much for your time. Andrew, we'll talk to you this week. Thanks very much.